Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Everybody, if you are joining here in the space, if you are watching live stream, or if you are going to be watching this or watching this in the future, again, assalamu alaikum to you. Good morning. And uh, welcome back just to, to, to this session. And alhamdulillah, we are now on our 13th session. So we are really just cruising by here. Yesterday, we had the privilege of covering three very beautiful names of Allah, as all the names of Allah are beautiful, but we had the absolute privilege to cover the names of Al-Kabir, Al-Hafid, and Al-Muqit. And Al-Kabir gave us this connotation, this meaning of greatness, this meaning of just dignity, this boundless uh, greatness that just covers our world, that covers the creation through Allah. And we would cover the meaning of al-hafi, the one who preserves, the one who protects as well as preserves. So you think of someone that uh, when we look at the word of hafiz, you think of like a hafiz, you think of someone who's memorized the Quran, but you think of the preservation aspect of that, someone who remembers, someone who keeps into account and protects that and keeps it safe. And then we covered al-muqit, and al-muqit was not just the preserver, not just the protector, but the one who nourishes, like a razak, the one who provides and sustains, and who really keeps the keeps the creation going, comforts them, and gives them a loving type of nurturing, a type of nurturing that is very much akin to uh, the love and the dedication and the very specific calculated focus that you see like a mother nursing a child or like any kind of uh, creature that takes care of its own with, with such care. If you think of a gardener and a sapling and just tending to that, tending to that. So these names really help us see how Allah is intimately in, in, this, in this aspect of grandeur, in this aspect of being greatest, that Allah really is there and helps preserve us, is, is on our side, is there help rooting for us and is in such a capacity that is not just looking down on us. And so we lift up these and just remembering that as we know that Allah helps preserve us, helps protect us, helps nourishes us, helps sustain us, among other things, that when we go into prayer of Allah, when we go into any kind of difficulty or trial, we remember that we put our we put those worries back and we remember Allah is greatest. We put Allah before that. So bismillah. Let us go ahead and begin with the 99 names recitation, the Asma'il Husna, and then we will go into our names for today, Al Hasib, Al Jalil, and Al Kareem. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And bismillah, let us, let us begin. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Al-Malik al-Quddus al-Salam al-Mu'min al-Muhaymin al-Aziz al-Jabbar al-Muttakabbir al-Khaliq al-Bari al-Musawwir al-Ghafar al-Qahar al-Wahab al-Razak al-Fattah al-Alim القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المضل السميع البصير الهكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الهليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الهفيذ المقيت الهسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواسع الهكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوقيل القوي المتين الولي الهميد المحسي مبدي المعيد المحيي المميت 
الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصامد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المت تعالي البر التواب المنتقم العفو الرؤوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار النافع النور هذه البديع الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور. So with that, let us go ahead and let us begin with our names for today. As mentioned, today we will be covering Al Hasib, Al Jalil, and Al Karim, and you saw these on the on the PowerPoint. And so as we go into the 40s now with the names, Alhamdulillah, the first one we kick off here is. Uh, Al Hasib for today. Al Hasib is the one who calculates precisely, the one who demands account. So in Urdu, we have this, uh, this the word, the saying of Hisab Kitab, you know, of, of keeping the accounts. And, you know, just, just the Hisab is, is literally those accounts. And Al Hasib is the one who not just provides the account, but the one who calculates, the one who keeps track of these things. And so as, as Muslims and uh, just, you know, in, in terms of theology and belief, many of us incorporate this concept of deeds. Many of us incorporate this concept of good deeds. And this is lifted up in the Quran, the good deeds and the bad deeds and in the traditions of the Prophet ﷺ. And so all the deeds of humans are in, in, in our understanding recorded. They're being recorded, even if they are as small as an atom in, in terms of like goodness, whether it's just a small intention, if it's just a small action, or even if it's a small negative action that might be the size of like a mustard seed or just something very insignificant. But these things, each of our things are being recorded that we are doing. And so nothing gets lost. Nothing gets overlooked. So you think of uh, Allah as just this absolute uh, perfect type of accountant that keeps track of all of these things, but not in a way to make you feel that you know you are going to be overburdened by one deed or another, or that hey, you're going to let some things will just like slip, some things will go there. That Allah keeps all these things in balance. Allah keeps track of all that. So even if you do something as it's insignificant that you feel is just something small. Allah lifts that up through Al Hasib. And this root comes from uh, or gives gives the meanings of computing, of reckoning, of calculating, of counting, to charge, to credit, and also to help take something into account and to measure. So you have someone or something, some entity here and some description of what this, this, this name is kind of bringing. It's like a fine tuning, balancing. Uh, it's a very, very interesting name. And it helps us see what we really need to develop because as I mentioned with every single name that we discuss here, there is the aspect of it that Allah is, is just you know solely reserved to that this is a transcendent name of just Allah. But it, given our, uh, our understanding of how the creation came to be, how Allah blew the ruh into the humans and the, the spirit to get the human into creation. And you see that there's these small divine sparks of each of these names, that Al-Hasib is no different. That when Al-Hasib comes to being, when Allah is being accountable, when Allah is doing all these things, it has an inward reflection as well for us. And so it helps us see what we really need to develop, to transform, thinking of any kind of business, any kind of institution that has to go back and do like a strategic planning meeting, has to account what was this year like, you know, has to look at their budgets, has to see like, how much did we spend? How much did we do here? And then being able to adjust for the next year or being able to adjust. And so similarly, we look at ourselves in that way that we look at what, what are our expenses? What are our, uh, what's our income? What's coming in here? What's there? But so we can balance ourselves out. The, the goal being to balance ourselves. And so 
we not only weigh our deeds, we are just keep account of our deeds, we keep account of our words, we keep account of our thoughts, and we keep these in account to not just help us reconcile with ourselves, but to also start a new beginning. If we just kind of just throw those to the side, like, hey, you know, I did a lot of bad stuff here and there, but I'm just going to focus just on the good, we might find ourselves repeating that bad, those bad things. We might find ourselves in the same cycle of it. So al Hasib really lifts up the concept of being accountable to ourselves, to being like, hey, I did mess up. Let me go ahead and name what I messed up on. Let me go ahead and name what did I do wrong. So al Hasib really tells us, hey, you can be accountable. You can make mistakes. Yeah, you can go into the red on some of your spreadsheet cells. That's fine. But you, that's not the end of your story. And so al Hasib tells us that you can, there's more to you than that. And that Allah, regardless Regardless of this, regardless of this accounting, demands that account from us, demands that account not just for Allah, but for our own sake. And so Allah demands that we be vigilant, we be, that we be tact uh, as human beings because our uh, attention and sensitivity to ourselves then and to Allah then bring a respect for ourselves and everything around us. And it then also gives us that respect for Allah. And it gives us an increased sight in, uh, in, in, Allah, in, in Allah's uh, sight. It gives us an increased rank that, that it shows this, this holistic mindfulness that is no longer just like, yeah, I think I'm doing good. But now you get to that stage where you are really keeping account of yourself. And some folks may be feeling this is an overwhelming name. Like I do so many things during the day. How am I going to keep it? Tra like that? what if I miss, you know, like I mess up my light switch or I do something or I forget to feed the dog one day or I do, you know, and just do, do these little things here. The thing is that it's not to overburden you that, hey, you're keeping track of all these little things. The thing is that you establish that essence within you that I am doing something and I'm being mindful of it. And each of your actions will then reflect that. Of course, you're going to mess up some. We're human. You have to be able to mess up. If you don't mess up, you may not be human and we may need to open you up to see what your algorithm is inside. No, I'm just joking. But we the the concept of imperfection, the concept of mistakes is, is ingrained within us. So you will mess up some things, but the, 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 the thing is that you, you remember when you did mess up and you, you're able to reconcile it, you're able to have a conversation with it, and then you're able to move on. But the fact that we can go on without any mistakes, this might be something that uh, is, is beyond that. But we, we are given this opportunity, we're given mistakes to be able to do this, uh, this hisab kitab, to do this muhasaba, this accounting of ourselves. So as we go here, we look at not just this mindfulness, but uh, when we see that we haven't done something right or we make a mistake, we go to Allah, not of our own self-reproach, not uh, of that uh, that nafs al lawama, but an awareness that Allah will forgive and give refuge for purification. So, I, like I said, a lot of times we get a lot of anxiety that do my good deeds outweigh my bad ones? Do these outweigh my bad? Is my bad deed that I just did does that cancel out all the good deeds I just did? We get a lot of anxiety uh, in in the numbers game and the numbers crunching and everything that we do. But this name helps us instill that even if we don't do something right, or even if we make a mistake, we go to Allah uh, in, in, in a manner that Allah will give us forgiveness. Allah will help us set, set things right and not completely just disown us there. So it's the same thing for if we've done something right, that if we do something right, we lift up the uh, praises of Allah. So you think about that. If we do something wrong, we, we subconsciously start to pair that with the Astaghfar, the istighfar, the uh, saying of astaghfirullah, that we, 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 we ask forgiveness from Allah. Even if it's just we do something bad, we couple that with Allah, that we ask for forgiveness. And the same thing if we do something right or if something goes our way, we say alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, that we, we, we account that back because it's no longer just a relationship of Allah that I just did all this stuff in the world. Now, Allah, you measure this and tell me what, what where I'm going. No, you keep an active conversation as you are doing your accounting. So just think of that accounting relationship with a kind of a supervisor that is able to see like what, what your numbers are like, where, where your balance sheet is like, and keeping that conversation to know when I make a mistake, when I do right, when I do wrong, I'm going to take that to Allah. And so we go, uh, in, in, as we close out with this name, that al Hasib not only demands us to be uh, accountable to ourselves, but to demand introspection for ourselves, that we are called to take care 
that our lot of our lives, our possessions, our knowledge, and our talents, and we're called to see how these things can be used well and be enjoyed to the full, but also how can we, uh, what can we do to make the most of these things? What are we doing with these things? The, the Quran tells us that on that day, you will be accountable of all blessings. So being mindful, what are my blessings? What is going on in this world for me? And what am I doing with it? It's not just for me, but what am I doing with it? And to live truly really means to take one's uh, care of oneself physically, oneself emotionally and spiritually, being aware of who we are, what we have, and where we are, and what we can do. And so we, this name helps us become more attentive. It helps us live by that which is noble, reliable, uh, refined, and correct. It's refined. It's something that's reconciled. So it's not just a perfect thing. And we are called to uh, be accountable both to ourselves and to our community and to Allah. And this name really helps lift that up for us. So inshallah, we now go to Al-Jalil. Al-Jalil, the glorious, the majestic, the magnificent, the honorable. This name really expresses that majesty and significance of the divine. Al-Jalil is the penetrating, the absolute divine force that manifests just in everything and everyone without exception. And so we see this in so many of the other names, but it's just manifested in many of the divine names just being, just the divine attributes just being, this name lifts up from these. And so it comes from a root of being great, being beyond something like transcendent, to be far above something, but to honor, to dignify, and to exalt, to really raise. And the divine signs that we've been talking about, the divine names that we've been talking about, these divine signs, as we've mentioned, have been ingrained, engraved on our heart in the form of these divine names since the beginning of creation. And everything around us, as we've mentioned, resonates in a divine name and was created in a divine spark. It didn't have to be, this is exactly that divine name. This is not that because those, those attributes alone belong to Allah, but the spark of that, those reminders of the divine manifesting through these attributes help, helps us see their reflection of Allah, helps us see Allah's signature on, on the world and helps us be more mindful of Allah. But as we become more mindful of Allah, we become more mindful of ourselves. Ourselves. As we become more mindful of ourselves, we become more mindful of Allah. So it's a two-way street that helps us to grow as humans. And then it leads to things like accountability, like muhasabah, like being more accountable to ourselves. And so if the essence, the divine essence, if you think of it like water, just think of that divine essence, this substance that we're talking about, it's like water. The divine names are these oceans, these seas, these rivers, these lakes, waterfalls. You just think of these rushing bodies of water, but yet that essence is still, that water is still remains just one, a singular source. It becomes that thing that from all of these rivers, from all of these, for all these rivers, for all of these oceans and everything, that source of water is just one. They, they come from that same source. And so, but they each address us in different ways. The ocean is used for different things or can carry different things, has different things. A river has different things. Lakes have different things. Streams, little streams have different things. So you think of how these names meet us where we are at rather than helping go the opposite way and just make a lot more separate. They make a lot more accessible because they come where we are and they show us where Allah uh, has been manifest, has manifest those divine sparks in the world. And so Al Jalil helps lift up the quality of majesty. It uh, goes very similarly to the names of Al Azim, Al Qawi, and Al Ghani, the latter two of which we'll talk about in the in the future, inshallah. But also, uh, it couples with these qualities of beauty of Ar Rahman, Al Latif, Al Karim, or the uh, Jamil. So there's there's this majesty of Allah, the Jalal, and then there's the beauty of Allah in the Jamal. And so it, it you you see these two manifest side by side. And in life, there are phases and situations when we can't contribute to change anything or to do anything, maybe from the outside. And in times such as this, it's important for us to not only recognize uh, Al-Jalil, the gifts that we've been given, the majesty of Allah and what Allah is, who Allah is, that it helps us develop those inner qualities of strength, confidence, trust, and surrender. And Al-Jalil is the one who helps develop these, is help gives that mindset for us and then helps these qualities then flow out 
Al Jalil helps show the manifestation of the divine as it appears and it begins to continue to expand and shows us our closeness to the divine, shows us how we can dissipate our fear by just seeing the divine everywhere. So Al, -Al, -Al Jalil really helps act, serve as this mirror, serve as this reflection, serve as these glasses that let us kind of see, like you go to a 3D movie and things on the screen might not look clear until you put on those red and blue glasses and you're like, okay, now I can kind of like see exactly what, what I'm seeing or those 3D goggles that you're putting on and you're like, okay, I can see exactly like what, 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 is, what is coming at me and all this stuff. And sometimes we just need and, and help. Sometimes we need an indication and Al Jalil in Allah's name help, helps couple with all these other names to lift that up to see what all uh, is really around me. So you might not recognize the mercy. You might not recognize the accountability. You might not recognize the justice. You might not recognize the lovingness. You might not recognize any of the generosity or any of that stuff. This may just be flying by. Al Jalil helps us give us that pause and see what all really is there. The last thing we cover is a beautiful name and well-known name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's Al Karim, the generous, the magnanimous, the noble-minded, the charitable. We, we talked about how Allah is uh, a shakur, the, the, the grateful, the one from whom gratitude uh, is not just due, but the one from whom gratitude transcends. And now we come into uh, Allah's most generous quality, al karim generosity that not only uh, pertains to provision or pertains to anything or life or anything, but is an all-encompassing generosity that not just reaches us as human beings, but reaches all of creation without exception. And it comes from this root of being noble, precious, honoring, venerating, treating with deference, viewing in generosity, giving hospitality, being kind, being just wholly generous, not just a generous in the form of writing a check every month and saying, hey, I'm a charitable person, but being generous, being giving from what you have. When, when you say you're generous, that means you give from something from what you already have. Um, and not just that, but you go and you make sure that whatever that person doesn't have, you give so that they are now uplifted. It's not just like, hey, you know, I gave a dollar to someone on the side of the street, I'm being generous. Yeah, that's generosity to an extent, but it's like, this generosity is holistic. This generosity is like, hey, you don't have a home, Here's a home. Here's the keys. Have a good day. It's 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 those that lift you up. That that just completely does. And hey, while I'm at it, why don't I drive you home and get get you to your house? So this is the kind of generosity that Allah extends to us, not just the ones that we might find in our limitations here. And so the gifts of Al Karim, the generosity of Al Karim, are both of that physical and spiritual nature. As with every name that we've talked about of Allah, it has the physical benefits and dimensions. It has the spiritual benefits and dimensions. So what we can't maybe see on our outside. If we're having a really hard time situation outside, we might be in the most marginalized portions of society, and there's not much that we see in the way of the physical. The generosity of Allah is manifest and is abundant within the spiritual, within the internal. And so al Karim, we can find these sparks within us of al Karim. We find our livelihood effortlessly, and we find that the abundance will come to us in the inner and the outer. We, we see what do we have, what we really do after we do that al hasib We see we pair this with the generosity, with the accountability. We see what we have, we see what we do, but we see also what we're capable of and what uh, Allah has been providing us. And so, you know, what uh, this analogy was made in, in the book that we're covering here in nine, uh, D Divine divine Names uh, by Rosia uh, Al-Rawi, or Rosina Al-Rawi, that uh, what growth is to plants, movement is to animals, and giving is to human beings in the sense that it, 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 you see how significant each of these things is that uh, giving is, is a transformative thing. It takes us to that next stage. You know, a plant that grows then goes to beyond to blossom. A animal that begins to move is then able to survive, able to thrive, able to reproduce. And humans that then are able to give are able to give, are then able to transcend. And I'm just not talking about the giving that you have enough in your bottom line to be able to spare something for another person, but you're able to give from what you have. You may be uh, on the complete margin of society and not have anything to your name, not have any money, but you recognize what gifts you might have to give out. You may be a, a gifted orator, you may be a gifted person in your, your personality, whatever it might be, but you use it. Smiling is, as the Prophet said, a beautiful form of charity. So if you are just someone who has only a 
smile on their 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 person to offer that is something that is that you recognize to offer and so as we close with this name we recognize that uh smiling language our creativity these things are just unique to us as humans and uh we we, we use not not to say smiling is not unique to humans but you know smiling just in terms of these are human traits and using these to express our generosity using these to uh, thank Allah for Allah's generosity, and then subsequently using this as our generosity to other people. And so generosity and kindness of Allah, as we mentioned, are boundless. And everything we have been given is generosity. Our patience is generosity. Our property, our wealth, whatever it might be, our sustenance is generosity. Our inspiration we receive when we get, uh, we start at work or we do whatever it might be, and we have a just awakened sense, that's generosity. Our reason and our intellect is generosity, and the generosity we have is generosity. These are all manifestations of the most generous. And so we want to live in a way that we show and we live out our generosity, and our generosity helps us conquer that ego and arrogance and it enables us to be grateful to our own character the last thing i'll say is each of these names you've probably been hearing helps uh, provide a a comment on polishing the ego on softening the heart because we were talking about this yesterday that when your heart becomes hard when you put in terms of things in front of it of self-reproach you feel shame you put a lot of different things and you put the distance between Allah your heart might not be getting hardened but you're adding these layers to where then Allah's signs Allah's uh, calls and different things are just not getting through and so we want a way to reconcile with ourselves let's peel back those layers we don't have to completely disregard guard them, but let's work through them. Let's work through them because an open heart not only takes in, but gives out. And so this, uh, this, this generosity can be manifested in people. We give when we're asked. We're present when someone comes to see us. We keep our word. We look after the affairs of the marginalized, and we look after the well-being of ourselves, as well as those who, uh, who are not in that position. And so as we close, we reflect on this, that we want to show our generosity, not just on the pages of a checkbook or in a, uh, in, a, in a monetary donation, but we show our generosity in our thoughts. We show our generosity in our full character, and we recognize that this generosity that we are providing is a reflection of the generosity bestowed upon us because we have a God that is al karim the most generous. So inshallah, with that, we conclude for uh, the divine names. We're going to start the dhikr here uh, right after in just a second. But just to lift up these words, we, we, we want to keep ourselves accountable because we know all that we have been bestowed. We see the generosity of Allah through this accountability. And through these two names, we also see Al-Kabir. Or sorry, not could be, uh, we, we, we see Al Jalil. We see uh, Al Jalil in the majesty of Allah, that, that all these things are here and we're able to take advantage, but also we're able to keep account. So we, we don't, we don't get, go to extremes on either sides with what we've been given and what we do. So, inshallah, let, uh, let us uh, incorporate these into our daily, uh, our, our, our daily ibadah, our daily worship, but also our daily actions and our speech. And with that, let us begin with our dhikr. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Hasib, 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 Al Hasib. Al Hasib, Al Hasib, Al Hasib, Al Hasib. Al Hasib, Al Hasib, Al Hasib, Al Hasib. Ya Hasib, 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 Ya Hasib. Al Jalil, 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 Al Jalil. 
या जलील 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 ला इलाहा इल्लल्लाह ला इलाहा इल्लल्लाह La ilaha illallah Allah 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 La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah Allah 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 Al Karim 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 Ya 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 Karim La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah Allah 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 لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله 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 الله. So friends, as we close out our session today, we remind ourselves that as we are being that we as we go out in our world, as we go out in our day, we be mindful. We be mindful that we will make mistakes. We be mindful that we are going to do good things and that we keep account of these things. We keep a register of these things that we're doing good, we're doing bad, but let's reconcile. Let's talk to each other. Let's talk to one ourselves to keep that those scales uh, to favor our good deeds. But we can't do that unless we know what mistakes we made. So we don't want to put those completely behind us. We want to be accountable. And when we're accountable, we see the generosity of Allah for allowing us to be accountable. And when we see that generosity in us, we see that generosity around us. We see Al Jalil. We see the majesty that Allah has created this world in. So go in peace, inshallah, and we will see you tomorrow, same time. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.